When I was a kid, a hot water bottle looked like that. And today, they still look like that. So they are that shape. They have a little hole down there that that stopper can go into. Now, that's all very well if you want a heated area that's just like that. But I think there's other options, such as, why not have, like this, really, really big ones, really big flat things, so you can put on your whole back, or they can be fatter, they can be skinny or whatever, or wrap around your belly, or, even better still, like this, really long skinny one. Now, what's the benefit of that? A long skinny one can wrap around your arm, if you've got a sore arm or cold arm, wrap around your leg. Uh, I can't see any reason why they can't be a whole range of shapes. And in fact, on that, why not even novelty shapes? Why not even uh, a starfish, where there's probably even Velcro on the ends and so it can wrap around an arm, uh, like an octopus or something like that. Come on, let's get creative. As you might know if you've seen some of my travel videos, I love to snorkel and I snorkel all over the world, but when I'm here in Tasmania, I snorkel every day in summer. Um, but in the last six months, I've needed glasses to be able to see really clearly. And uh, so that gives me a bit of a problem because I can't wear my glasses inside this, inside my mask. Now, I know that you can buy little, um, very expensive masks that have got um, little glasses down in here and they're, they're for, not quite for prescription glasses, although you could probably get them, um, but they are for uh, one magnification or two or three or whatever. But what I'd like to see built into one of these, and maybe it's an, the old design which is more oval, but um, something like this where your own normal reading glasses can fit just inside there, anybody's reading glasses can fit inside um, a mask like this, and then that means everyone can go snorkeling and everything is going to be nice and sharp and crisp. Now, I don't know how anyone in a major city in Australia can afford a home. Um, prices of half a million to several million is what it's going to cost you to get a normal sort of basic home. Uh, so how do people go in the future with this? Well, I think the whole concept of how people build is wrong. I think there's a better way to go. For example, if there was uh, a modular system that people could buy, so as soon as you get married, you put down a certain size slab on your, your block of land, and that these modular units can just land on top of it. And in that modular unit, you've got the basic bathroom, kitchen, toilet, and that sort of thing. Um, but then you can add on to it as your family grows. So then you get another module that kind of just slips into it. Um, and so when I mean slip, it just sort of glides down and fits into it. And therefore all the electric sort of join, joins up, something like that. Um, so as your family grows, you get more kids and so on. And so you can build onto your house and you can have all these modular bits that at get attached to your sort of house. It can go from one story to two story. That makes a lot of sense to me. Also, as you're getting older and your kids leave home, you can take off a section and sell that to someone else. Um, and that, to me, that makes so much more sense. And um, then you can add little bits. So if you decide that you might want a deck, um, there is a section that's already pre-made somewhere and it can come on and be your deck. That makes so much sense and that makes sense not only in Australia but all around the world to have modular sort of housing and different components that can be added and taken away. Now why I'm mentioning a modular system is because then you don't have to pay for a great big house all in one go. You can uh, buy parts of it or maybe you can even hire and rent these modular units. Now that makes a lot of sense to me. Now, I don't know if this is a good idea or not, but uh, surfboard riders put uh, wax like this on their surfboard because they're smooth and that stops them from falling off. So I'm suggesting, and I don't know if this is a good idea or not, that if they wear booties like this, that booties would have little suction caps on the bottom of them, of them to uh, give them a bit more suction and traction on their board. If you've ever painted inside a house, you'll know that you have to put down a, a ground sheet, some sort of cover sheet, a floor, floor covering, so therefore paint doesn't go on your floor. And uh, 
in my case I often use a big sheet like this and put that down or sometimes I'll even go off and get a tarp and put that on the, on the ground but the problem with these they move all the time particularly if you're moving your um, any sort of bit of furniture around so I'm suggesting that the manufacturers of these tarps and ground sheets instead of just making them normal sort of plastic or even cloth ones that on the corners and along the edge they put velcro so therefore you can put if you're if you're doing painting above a carpet the velcro uh, the one with the little hooks on it can grab onto the carpet and they'll never move Now on the subject of painting houses, I came up with this idea of a cutting edge roller, but I've never made a prototype to see if it works or not. But here's the design, and uh, perhaps you might want to make one and see if it works. Now, the whole point of this is, it's a roller that can go right up close to a, a skirting board or a wall or a, a door or whatever that you don't want painted, and this little device might stop the paint roller from squishing paint onto areas that you don't want paint to go on. probably notice once you've hung a picture on the wall, sometime later, a day, two, a week, or whatever, the picture's moved and it's no, it's no longer straight. Now, it's not so much a problem with a big painting like this, and that's uh, about six or seven feet long, but often when you put small pictures on a wall, they move. Now, the reason they move is because of air that might go down a passageway, or as people go past them, the air current past them uh, moves, moves them. So, I've come up with this little idea. I call it the picture bollard. Now the picture bollard would be just a small piece of plastic, uh, only two centimetres wide, and it's got a couple of spots in the back of it, or one, depends on the model that you might get, uh, or it could even have uh, self-adhesive uh, tape on the back, and it simply goes into the wall right about there, uh, so you'd never see it's made out of a clear plastic, and it would stop the picture from moving. So. Maybe someone out there might want to make one. I love Chinese food. And uh, nothing better than have a nice bowl full of some sort of soup or, or curry or whatever it might be using the chopsticks. But, wouldn't it? but the problem is you've got all the big bits and at the end there's just some sauce left down there and that's often the best part. So my suggestion is if there was such a thing as chopsticks that were disposable and hollow you could suck up all that beautiful sauce. Now I did say at the beginning of this tape that all these ideas are random. So here's another random idea. Now when I watch sport, and I don't do it very often because I'm not really a sporty sort of person, but when I watch sport on TV, uh, there's supposed to be some major event uh, taking place and there's lots of action and you can hear some screams, yeah, that's great. Uh, and the camera swings around to the crowd and often they focus in on uh, the stadium where there's hardly anybody in there. So my suggestion is this, that when they make uh, stadium seats, that they make them in the shape of people and maybe even have them coloured, uh, printed on there. So it looks like there's a whole lot of people that aren't there. And so you've got different shapes uh, at different heights, slightly different heights. So therefore, when the camera zooms around all the spectators, it looks like there's a lot more people than there really are. One of my interests is uh, bushwalking. And I had this idea many years ago of a concertina tent. So if you're going bushwalking and it's starting to get late, you can take off your backpack and it turns itself into a tent. Uh, or if you're in emergencies and you need to put up a tent really, really quickly without all the other rigmarole, this is the sort of perfect tent. Now, how it works is it's got a particular a, a solid outside frame. Your tent gets pulled out from that, but you can still put all your gear inside the tent. So as you pull the tent out, um, all your gear is still safely in there. Have a look at this illustration. My other idea for a backpack, and I call it that track pack, it's a, a solid casing and where you can add different compartments to it as you go. And it's a backpack that 
because it's made out of plastic, it wouldn't matter if it rained or snowed or whatever. And it's also got a compartment on the top there that you can put your maps. Uh, there's things that you can, uh, compartments that you can add on the side or take off. Have a look at these illustrations. So random, here's another one, and that is real estate signs. Now, at the moment, in Australia, or around here anyway, real estate signs are just a uh, printed sign stuck in your front yard, and that's it. But I think there's so many other opportunities for a real estate sign. So, for example, it could be one that moves around, right? It's got a little sort of um, a sail on it, and then it, that sort of moves, goes around, or part of it moves. The other thing is, why not glow in the dark paint or sections of it? So as you're going past that night, it still stands out. But better still, why not even a little solar panel on it and the whole thing works during the day, but it gets charged up during the day and at night it's illuminated. To me, that makes a lot of sense and the technology is out there. It's winter at the moment and I haven't been doing the exercise that I should be doing. So I'm getting fatter all the time and I find my belts are really getting really tight. And I thought, what would be a good idea, instead of having a buckle like this, and, which then damages that little part and you've got to keep changing, why not one that's got Velcro on it? So as you get fatter in the winter, you just move your Velcro belt a little bit more. Maybe it exists, I don't know, but I haven't seen them. I'm going to read you this one. It's for my book. Uh, it's called Nutraseed. Here's the problem. Growing any plant from seed is a difficult task. Yes, I know about that. I've had lots of failures. Especially when the grower has limited knowledge of soil types. Common crop failures are caused by too much fertiliser, the wrong fertiliser, not enough moisture, too much moisture. Um, some people plant the things too close together. Whatever. So, anyway, this is my suggestion. Um, this is a, a pack, I call it Nutri-Seed. And it looks like any other sort of pack that you might get with air, you know, airfoil envelope. Inside the envelope is a long narrow length of paper, double layered and concertina, squashed up. Between the two sides of this very long card is a length of waxy paper. The waxy paper separates the seeds on one side as they are stuck together um, with a square of double sided tape from a block of, and from a block of minerals and nutrients on the other side. The waxy paper also stops early germination. So, at specific intervals along the paper are seeds and nutrients which are placed at the optimum distance for full growth. All right, so that's sorted out how, how wide they're going to be. Uh, the grower simply digs a trench according to the instructions on the paper strip, folds the seeds over, and it comes in contact with the nutrients. Okay, so you open it up, you fold it together, then the paper is placed into the trench, watered and covered with soil. The seeds have an excellent chance of germinating because sufficient and appropriate nutrients are provided. See, it's all in one package. Water will remain in the paper and in due course the paper will disintegrate. Uh, the paper will, paper may well even have a litmus indicator on it. So there you go, have a look at this illustration. I don't know how random ideas I've just filmed there, but anyway, uh, whatever I have there, if it interests you, make it for yourself or make some for the world. <laughs>